Good morning, everyone. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. I want to address this morning a topic that is a little bit complex, but I think we can can delve into it and explain it so that people can understand. And this topic is how that the global control system, as it is arising now, in the, in terms of both a religious control system and a government control system. So it's the union of church and state into a one world power, as um, of course the image of this in the book of Revelation is the image of the horror of Babylon riding the beast. Now, as this system is forming, so it's the union of church and state, we can notice certain ways in which it is gaining power. And it's a system of control that primarily obtains its objectives through emotional manipulation. And how is this done? Well, let me start with a, a quote from Pope Francis from June of 2014. And he said that a fundamentalist group although it may not kill anyone, is violent. The mental structure of fundamentalists is violence in the name of God. Now, one thing that he's doing here is he is, of course, uh, mixing different kinds of fundamentalism, because we do know that the Islamic fundamentalism that is radical it is violent, and does commit atrocities in the name of Allah, which is not the same God, of course, as the God of Christians. And what the Pope is doing here is he is taking advantage of that particular situation and applying it broadly to all fundamentalism. So, and, and how I know that is if we go now to a quote from the same man, Pope Francis, from November of 2016. And here he says, Fundamentalism is a sickness that is in all religions. It, and I'm skipping all over a little bit of the quote here, but I will attach a link. It says, It lacks God and is idolatry. So fundamentalism lacks God and is idolatry. He says, Fundamentalists believe in absolute truth and go ahead dirtying the other with calumny, disinformation, and doing evil. Now, there, that's quite a statement there. So let, let's break it down a little, little bit. First of all, we, of course, need to define fundamentalism. So fundamentalism refers to the belief of an individual or group in the absolute authority of a sacred text or teachings of a particular religious leader, prophet, or God. So, and this isn't my de definition, this is a definition from Wikipedia. So, fundamentalism refers to the ab belief in the absolute authority of, for example, the King James Bible or in the absolute authority of the teachings of Jesus Christ, or, or, or what's said in Scripture about what God has said, or what Jesus Christ has said, or say a teacher such as the Apostle Paul or the Apostle Peter. So this is what religious fundamentalism is when we're referring to Christianity. So I'm going to read his statement again. Fundamentalists believe in absolute truth and go ahead dirtying the other with calumny, disinformation, and doing evil. Pardon me, I have a little scratchy throat today. So, um, he also has said in the previous quote that you don't have to actually commit violence to be violence. That it's the the, the, the fundamentalist structure is, is, it's a mental structure, so it's a condition of the mind that although, and I'm quoting here, although it may not kill anyone, 
is violent. So what we're hearing here is, uh, and is that fundamentalism, which is, of course, something that I am. I'm a fundamentalist. I believe in the absolute authority of the King James Bible and also in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Father, our God. And I also believe in the absolute authority of teachings from people like the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter. So I am a fundamentalist. And according to Pope Francis, that this is mentally violent. All right. Now, what is calumny? Because this is a strange word, and, and I actually had to look it up. I didn't know what it meant. So I, I did look it up. And... And so the definition of calumny is a false and malicious statement designed to injure the reputation of someone or something. Now, that sounds like a, a terrible thing to make a, a false statement about an individual or a thing that would hurt their reputation. However, in, in this world, we have to examine this charge of his that Fundamentalism uh, m makes false and malicious statements designed to injure the reputation of someone or something uh, by virtue of upholding to Holy Scripture as an authority. Because what that means is that when someone makes a statement that does not agree with Holy Scripture and a person who, who's a Christian points out that it doesn't line up with scripture, that, that this would be according, in this context, Pope Francis is saying that this is calumny, that, that it's, it's making a malicious, a false and malicious statement designed to injure the reputation of someone or something. So if one, for example, addresses uh, false teachings, false teachers, if, if they call attention to how a certain individual's words do not agree with scripture and therefore they are not to be followed, that this is calumny. So that's a serious charge. And his next charge is disinformation. So disinformation is, of course, the, the, what is being propagandized these days as fake news. And Pope Francis has actually come out and made a number of statements about social media. And, and there actually is, is a document written some many years ago about social media before there was any social media. And on Mother's Day of this year, uh, there's going to be an effort on the part of the Vatican to address social media as a problem where people are making false and malicious statements Okay, committing calumny or propagandizing disinformation uh, or doing evil. And, and accord, again, according to Pope Francis, that a fundamentalist group, although it may not kill anyone, is violent. The mental structure of fundamentalists is violence in the name of God. So in his opinion, disagreeing with the status quo and the status quo right now is the ecumenical movement whereas it's a new gospel it's not the gospel of jesus christ rather it is the gospel of unity tolerance and inclusiveness and a, a fundamentalist someone who believes in the absolute truth of god's word who for example might warn someone about the consequences for sin, whether it be adultery, fornication, homosexuality, pedophilia, uh, or other sins such as thievery uh, or murder or slander. That If a Christian says that the consequences for various kinds of sins is hell, that this is violence and, and and we do know that um, th this kind of propaganda has been subtly introduced for quite a while now I want to talk about how 
that has been used um, in order to silence people. The first way that censorship takes place is in self-censorship. So when a person is um, brought to fear the opinions of other people or the verbal attacks of other people by expressing a certain point of view, they might self-censor. So to be accused of spiritual racism, which was a term that Tony Palmer, who was an ecumenical leader, coined for, for those who don't want to, of course, join up with the world religion. So those who don't want to join up with the one world religion, according to Tony Palmer, were spiritual racists. Um, that, that the first way that people are censored is in self-censorship. So it becomes unpopular to have certain views and people who are uh, part of this new gospel are very vicious in the way that they attack people. They call them names such as homophobic, homophobic, uh, racist, uh, xenophobe, and th those are just a few examples. So the name calling can get a person to self-censor. The second level of censorship is social censorship and, and that is pretty much where we're at right now where social media controls and bots are in place to restrict the availability of certain points of view to cut people off on YouTube for example from being able to monetize their videos if um, they express certain points of view uh, and of course, you know, I don't monetize my videos, and I'm not saying this because um, I'm upset about that. I'm just pointing out that this is a way that censorship is taking place. Because when people devote their energy full time to, to getting alternative news out to people online, if they can't earn money doing that, it is a form of censorship, and it does make many people go away. There's other ways that people are censored on social media. One is through uh, community guidelines strikes uh, or through um, vi a video being flagged for a copyright violation. And, and the thing is they can take down your channel based on an allegation alone if, if they um, have determined that you have violated community guidelines. And, and these community guidelines appear to be not well defined and not and, and when they make this accusation they won't tell you what particular um, community guideline you violated now again this isn't a problem with my channel at this point but i have witnessed other people going through this and channels get taken down people get silenced and, and this is social censorship now the the next kind of censorship which we are on, on the, we're at the doorway of this kind of censorship is medical censorship. And this is when, uh, certain viewpoints are seen as uh, a form of mental illness. So I want to go again to Pope Francis' statements from no, November of 2016. He said, fundamentalism is a sickness that is in all religions, lacks God, is idolatry, Fundamentalists believe in absolute truth and go ahead dirtying the other with calumny, disinformation, and doing evil. And then the second quote is that fundamentalist group, although it may not kill anyone, is violent. The mental structure, the mental structure of fundamentalists is violence in the name of God. Now we've seen a number of terrorist events where people were uh, described as possibly being psychopathic or having a mental disease of some kind of mental illness. And we are now entering the realm where psychiatry has um, made certain things available online where, for, for example, if someone makes statements online or appears to be in a certain kind of mood online, that the uh, surveillance system will pick up on that, that the person might be at risk of committing suicide, and they will then send help. 
All right. So what this is, is that the state can send police officers and medical personnel to to take you from your home and bring you in for a psych psychiatric evaluation based on uh, artificial intelligence looking at the things that you're saying on social media. All right. And this is, of course, very dangerous. And most people don't realize that it won't be used for suicide prevention. All right. It, you know, that's what it says it's being used for. But what it will be used for, of course, is to detain people indefinitely in mental hospitals for mental health treatment, people who are guilty of thought crime. Now, thought crime is a term that George Orwell came up with in his book, 1984. And basically what thought crime is, is it's, it's the, the crime that is taking place in your mind. You haven't done anything, all right? So I'm going to read again here Pope Francis' statement. A fundamentalist group, although it may not kill anyone, is violent, all right? So the, he's saying that violence is in the mind, all right? Now, psychiatry, uh, want, you know, has talked for a long time about suicide prevention, but we also have a government that is talking about preventing terrorism. And, and so when we start getting into crime prevention, that's dangerous territory. Because if you can be arrested and detained, um, and held indefinitely and possibly even suffer criminal penalties, simply because an artificial intelligence or a government official has deter or a psychiatrist has determined that your ideas are violent. Okay, so again, I'm going to read this because I really want to hammer home the point here. A fundamentalist group, at, although it may not kill anyone, is violent. The mental structure of fundamentalists is violence in the name of God, right? So the next level after that, and once that piece is fully in place, and it's beginning to fall into place now, in certain places of the world, there there are people being arrested for pre-crime or or for which is thought crime, and that's Canada. I'm aware of it happening in Canada. The next one is the the criminal penalty for so criminal penalties for speech uh, so so then it, it it's going beyond just making it a self censorship social censorship or medical sense censorship the next step after that would be that to disagree with the state and to disagree with the state religion would be a crime and this is what happened in the Roman Inquisition in, in the Dark Ages, where people were tortured and killed for not agreeing with the Pope, with not agreeing with the Roman Catholic Church. Those very naive people who think that, that ecumenism is about including everyone and, and that it's about loving everyone and tolerance are sorely mistaken because what it's about is about including everyone but those who believe in Jesus Christ and the absolute authority of the Word of God. Now, what, what we're having form here is that fundamentalism, that word fundamentalism, is the new heresy. So those who hold to the truth of scripture will be represented as hateful, as spiritual racists, as homophobia, homophobic, as hating women, as being mentally violent, mentally diseased criminals. Uh, and I know this is um, disturbing, but we can now look at the scripture about this. Let's go to Mark chapter 13 and verse 13 and there we read and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake 
but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved All right so so yes that 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 you know there was never any promise that christians would have an easy life and a comfortable life and that they would never have to suffer any tribulation as a matter of fact that teaching it is is meant to make people very soft and and to encourage them to think that if they're suffering tribulation at all they must be outside of god's will all right and and this is another way that people have been manipulated to think that if someone is say homeless or poor or suffering at the hands of government that that they must have done something to deserve it all right so th these are all ways that people's minds have been influenced but we do have to remember the words of jesus where he says he that shall endure until the end shall be saved all right if we turn now to the book of revelation and we go to chapter 13 and and verse 7 and this of course is referring to the antichrist and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world we we might be in the time where the saints are overcome by the antichrist but you know take heart because they can kill the flesh but they can't kill your life that your life is hid with jesus christ if you are born of his word and baptized in his name and seeking to follow him in obedience that you have received the holy spirit and you are led by god in your daily walk that you have nothing to fear all that death means is that you're going home and, and that you your suffering will be over and you will be triumphant in that moment so take heart Rem let's keep our eyes on the prize here let's keep our eyes on the savior because we don't have to fear what the enemy can do to us because we have been saved by jesus christ i hope this message is helpful to you i do realize the message is serious but these are serious times that we live in it's time for all of us to to be in prayer to prepare our hearts and to be ready for for the appearing of our savior for for he's coming to take us home and remember he does not he does not require us to go through anything that he will not give us the strength to go through it and to remain faithful my prayers are with you all